Okay, I hope you can see my screen now. So today we are going to talk about uh, system on chip and what is a system on a chip. Now, up till now we have discussed microcontrollers and we talked about microcontrollers in uh, full details because when it comes to an embedded system, we want a standalone system. So basically most of the time we are discussing the option of microcontrollers. Now, when it comes to real applications, and let's say, take our mobile phone as an example. Now, our mobile phones, um, they do not have a, they, they have microcontrollers, of course, but they are not based on microcontrollers. Why? Because one of the uh, things that we have discussed earlier and the limitations of microcontroller is the processing power. Microcontrollers are meant to be standalone systems, embedded systems that will do one or two uh, functions at a time. Now, imagine that you want to run your phone on a microcontroller. Running your phone on a microcontroller will take us back to maybe 1998, where uh, we have very limited power in a mobile phone. Nowadays, a mobile phone consists uh, has a power of almost a computer. Yani my laptop is having, a, um, I think, 8 gig RAM, and my phone is having 12 gig RAM. So the comparison, you can see that they are almost compared to each other. In terms of price, they are also almost uh, the same. Now, this gave us, uh, or this is an introduction to what we call system on chip. Uh, so, uh, Technology advances, uh, today's chip can contain 100 million transistors. And if we go a little bit into more details, we know that um, the uh, number of transistors, if we want to check the um, here on Google, let's check the number of transistors in a, in a, in a microprocessor of transistors in a micro see this this result I want to show you here there's a table let's go down to a microcontroller which is very commonly nowadays let's go to 2020 okay the apple a14 bionic okay this microcontroller has 11 billion 800 million transistors okay and uh, this chip it's uh, is uh, having this size of um, this is the size of the chip. So you can see that the microcontrollers are having more and more uh, transistors. This is, this is the Snapdragon, which is used in uh, Samsung phones, around 10 billion, 300 million transistors. So as you can see, now the number of transistors is increasing. And by Moore's law, approximately every 18 months, the number of transistors double. Every 18 months, the number of transistors will double according to uh, Moore's law. So uh, the consequence, the components connected to a printed board can now integrate into a single chip. Yani instead of having all the components on a board, on a PCB, printed uh, uh, board, it is now on a chip. Yani what we used to have the microprocessor, we used to have some part of the memory, we used to have the peripherals, we used to have everything on a PCB, printed, printed circuit board. Now we have everything in a single chip, so it's called a system on chip design. A system on chip design. So what's the system on chip? People A, some people, group of people, they call it the VLSI. VLSI stands for Very Large Scale Integration. The VLSI, Manufacturing Technology Advances, has made it possible to 
put millions of transistors on a single die. It enables designers to put systems on a chip that move everything from the board onto the chip eventually. Yani instead of having everything on a, a printed circuit board, we are moving everything inside one chip. The system will look neater and again, if you have everything on one chip, yes, you will have problems with power, but you also have less problems with noise because your signals are inside the chip. You don't have, you don't need wires or you don't have uh, long buses to take the signals. Another people will, will call it a high performance microprocessor since we can um, program and give instructions to a microprocessor to do whatever we want to do. So it's a high performance microprocessor. A system on chip is a high performance microprocessor. And other people will call it is the efforts of integration heterogeneous or different types of silicon uh, IPs. IP stands for intellectual properties. Okay, intellectual properties, which we are going to talk about it a lot uh, during our discussion in, on system on chip. Um, heterogeneous uh, in Arabic, غير متطابق أو غير متناغم. Now, when we talked about microcontroller, we said that the whole system is running on a single clock. The whole system is running on a single clock frequency. Now, everything will have times or subsystems from that clock. If you remember the analog to digital converter, we said we have prescalers which will divide the frequency. Timers and counters, we said we have prescalers which will divide the frequency. So we have one basic frequency which is running the whole system. But on a system on chip, we have heterogeneous, different types of silicons, different types of manufacturers on the same chip, like memory, microprocessor, random logic gates, and analog circuits. They are from different manufacturers, but they are all on the same chip. So all of the above are partially right, but not very accurate. So what is a system on chip? We cannot call a system a system on chip unless you have the chip, the software, and the integration. So to have a system on chip, you need to have the hardware, you need to have the software that is running each part of the hardware, and you need to integrate everything together so that they can work all at the same time. Yani, um, it's not the hardware, it's not the software, it's the hardware plus the software plus integrating everything together. So the system on chip includes embedded processors, application specific ICs, logic and analog circuitry, embedded memory. So all of these are together called the hardware of the system on chip. Now the software includes, includes sorry, an operating system, Compiler, simulator, framework, driver, protocol, uh, stack integrated development environment, and application interfaces. So the system on chip integration includes the whole system solution, the manufacturing consultant, and the technical support. Yani a system on chip is a full system, but it's on a single chip. Now, this one needs a little bit of fixing. Okay. Okay. Now, system on chip versus processor on chip. With lots of transistors, designers move in two ways. Complete system on a chip, multi-core processors with lots of cash. Time. The thing that we faced that on uh, up to a certain point, we found that the chip can hold more and more transistors. So what to do with these transistors? Some people said, okay, I will have, one, instead of having one core, let's add more cores into the chip. And we have the multi-core processors. And nowadays you can 
have uh, work uh, station uh, processors with up to 64 cores. Yani my computer is running four cores. You can have workstations with up to 64 cores. Other people said, okay, instead of having a lot of cores, we don't need that processing power. We will integrate more uh, of the components inside the chip. So in a system on chip, we have multiple or simple heterogeneous processors. We have cache of one level. We have memory. We have special uh, functionality. We have wide and high bandwidth. It is both, in, in terms of power and cost, both are low. Operation, again, we are uh, aiming for standalone applications. But when it comes to processor on chip, in terms of processors, we have homogeneous processors, two, three levels of extensive cache. Remember, this computer we are I'm using is running a, a three level, I think, three level cache. We can check it here. I think this computer is uh, running a three level cache, which is um, in terms of performance. See here, level one, level two, and level three cache. And it has four cores only, okay? And it has one socket, okay? Four cores and one socket. Now, in terms of memory, it is very large, but it is off chip, the RAM. Okay, we are talking here about the RAM. The RAM in this computer is off the chip. It's outside the processor, but it is very large, around 12 GBs on this computer. The functionality is special. Sorry, it is general purpose. This is a PC, okay? Often through the cache, the connection, the uh, data is communicating through the CPU always through cash cost and power is always high and sorry and we need other chips for oper operation but when it comes to system on chip it is standalone طيب, what is the difference between a system on chip and, and a microcontroller microcontrollers they have some of the properties yes it is standalone Power and cost is um, uh, low, both are low. Special purpose, memory is on chip. Uh, I think there is no cache. We have one processor only in the microcontroller. Here it has multiple and they are heterogeneous. And uh, the interconnection, it is uh, not bandwidth. So this one is not the same when it comes to microcontroller. So a system on chip, is sitting between the processor and the microcontroller which is much more faster so an iphone has a system on chip nowadays most of our uh, phones are running a system on chip if you open the uh, phone you are going to find uh, one big processor that processor chip is basically the whole system it will contain all the information which we are going to discuss now so this is the iphone system on chip and i can show you that nowadays we are um, running something more or less the same if i say iphone 12 uh, motherboard this is the iPhone uh, I think this one it's the same this is the system on chip for the iPhone 12 see it looks very small this is the whole thing over here it's similar to what we were having and the iPhone, I think this is iPhone 3G or whatever, it's running A4. Now we are A14. The idea is, yes, it looks like a board, but everything is inside this chip over here. So what does this chip have? If you look over here, 
the chip has the following maybe I can try to uh, zoom in no because there is a lot of things here so we have the processors we have one two three four five six seven processors now if you look at the processors you have a processor for the U SIM for the SIM card you have a processor for the power management and touch screen you have a processor for GPS you have a processor which is Cortex R4 CPU for the uh, 3G and 4G modem you have a processor for the Wi-Fi you have a processor for the Bluetooth yes and you have the main processor which is connected to the whole computer now the processor for the computer is running a dual core as you can see here Cort Cortex A9 CPUs with uh, L2 cache and Neon memories this is inside you, the very old iPhone okay then we have the input output modules in terms of input output modules we have an antenna for Bluetooth one for Wi-Fi one for the uh, GSM signals one for the GPS signals we have an input output for the LCD and HD uh, TV we have an input output for the camera and audio for the SD card although iPhones don't come with SDs for the touch screen all of these are input outputs and of course for the SIM card we have memories which is the boot ROM and the SD RAM and the NAND flash all of these are memories inside the phone so if you think about it a mobile phone is having a lot of uh, things happening on the same chip that's why it's called a system on chip each module each module is coming from a different manufacturer now how do they design all of this within six months yeah and if you think about it phone manufacturers around every six months they get a new model out and this model must have something extra from the other models to understand how things operate in terms of system on chips you need to understand that they do not build everything from scratch يعني, um, the iPhone screens are from Samsung the um, modems the 3G and 4G and 5G models for, are from different manufacturer the Wi-Fi are from another manufacturer so all you have to do is like building a Lego you just go and tell the manufacturers okay bring me all the nice things the latest technology that you have you put them you need to build a platform that will combine and make everything work together this is the manufacturers job so if you have the right resources you can build a phone by contacting the companies send me your Wi-Fi send me send me send me you need to build a software that will communicate everything together and fortunately this is quite uh, easy because uh, if you are running Android or iOS of course iOS is more difficult but if you are running Android you can build the whole thing uh, quite uh, easy because they have a lot of platforms for that now the um, uh, this is an example of the AMD uh, Barcelona multi-core processor and as you can see here this processor it's not very easy to read but you have here the two here sorry this is the pen here you have the L3 cache this, these are the L2 cache over here 512 2 megabyte L3 and the L1 cache these are also L2 cache and these are also L2 cache and I cannot see the L1 cache somewhere around here but you can see that you have in this AMD uh, multi-core processor you have four out of order cores 1.9 gigahertz clock rate 65 nanometer technology three level cache integrated north uh, bridge now you can see over here that we have the L2 caches which is 512 cache connected to an L3 cache and connected from core 0 to core 3 you see here that 1, 2, 3, 
four cores. So this is in the in yellow. There is one core. Here is another one. This is another one, and this is another one. And you have the L two for each one. L three is shared between uh, all of them. L one cache is built within the processor itself, so that's why it doesn't show over here. So it's somewhere inside the processor over here. It's not outside the processor. So as you can see, uh, the system is integrated into one I a chip and IC as uh, shown in the figure over here. Okay, it's shown. This is the north bridge. Okay, this is the north uh, bridge. North bridge is basically a, um, a bridge that connects all the cores together. طبعاً, when we talk about uh, why they have them uh, in the in these names, like here it's called Barcelona, uh, uh, Barcelona multi-core because maybe it looks like uh, the city of Barcelona. Now, in terms of design time, in terms of uh, design time. Okay, in terms of uh, design time, what happens is as we start building our uh, system, okay, as we start building our uh, system, you can see here that we need six weeks to start implementing. The top level design will need 12 weeks. The unit block design will need another 12 weeks. Then the unit block verification will need another uh, four weeks. Over here we have 14 weeks to build our integration. Then for system verification we need five weeks. And the uh, development of the uh, and fabrication will need another eight weeks. So in total we have 61 weeks to make sure that the system on chip is built 61 weeks is around one and a half years I know 48 weeks is one year 48 weeks one year so to build so to build a system in the right way we will need more than one year so a typical application a specific integrated circuit design will take up to two years to complete. The design verification and testing by itself will need at least uh, 12 weeks. Design verification and uh, testing. Now in terms of system on chip, this is the application specific, okay? This is the application specific IC. Yani, I go to the company and tell them, okay, I need you to build me uh, an IC that will do this function. The company will tell me, okay, this will cost you around maybe $100,000 and it will take us two years to finish. طبعاً, if we are going to go into that direction, then I will be losing money very fast. ليش? لأنه within two weeks, within two years, um, things will change. The technology that I'm asking will be too old. And this is a, a big mistake that a lot of companies, I think Motorola and BlackBerry, they went into this problem. They started their designs by themselves and they found once they finish their phones, their phones are out of date. Yani imagine me coming to you today and telling you that I want to sell you a phone which is two years old with the price of higher than the latest model. Nobody will buy it. Why? Because if you go to application specific IC, Again, application specific IC means that this IC is built for that application. This means that your IC will become old very fast. Unless you are building it for a device, يعني you are building it for a GPS, you are building it for a specific uh, device that will work only for that. For computer, for the car, for something, it's fine. Otherwise, for consumers, it does not work like that. Instead, in a uh, system on chip, we take out some of the times from the beginning here, but we keep the uh, these uh, 
19 weeks for the verification and testing at the same time. With the increase of complexity of ICs, the decrease of geometry, IC vendors uh, step of, uh, uh, steps of placement, layout, and fabrication are likely to be generally reduced. In fact, there is a great risk that timing convergence steps will involve more iterations. So we need to decrease the vendor's time and reduce the layout issues. The idea is, um, since I am getting uh, systems from different vendors, يعني, I'm not building everything from scratch. I'm getting the Wi-Fi from someone. I'm getting the Bluetooth from someone. I'm getting the camera modules from someone. And every vendor is uh, saying that my product is good enough. This means that I have no problems with the different vendors. All I have to do is combine everything together and make sure that everything is right. Of course, as you can see over here, this 14 plus 5, this 14 plus 5 over here and the 14 plus, plus 5 over here, we cannot have any shortcuts in them. Uh, design verification and testing is very important. You don't want to get an, uh, a product to the market which uh, is not working right. You don't want a product in the market which has some uh, problems. So instead, we usually make sure that everything is working and we don't take shortcuts in the design verification and testing. This is very important. Nobody can take shortcuts in the design verification and testing inside a system. Now, the uh, system on chip interconnection. So design reuse is facilitated if standard interconnection uh, buses are used yani, if you are using standard uh, verification then there is no problems all cores connected to the bus via standard interfaces any to any connection is easy but not all connections are necessary global clocking scheme is important and power consumption so the standardization is, be, uh, is uh, being addressed by the virtual socket interface alliances or VSIA. Fikra, I'm having, I'm having uh, modules from different vendors. So I need some sort of connection that will make things easier. So we need to have some standard uh, bus connections to make sure that once I come to build my system, I don't have a problem in the interconnection between the system. And this is by done by the virtual socket interface alliances. So we have different types of system on chip interconnections. We have the advanced microcontroller bus architecture used by ARM. And if you don't know ARM, ARM is a very popular uh, um, system on chip or processor builder. Yani nowadays ARM, um, yani I can show you here. If we search for ARM uh, processors. Now ARM processors, they have their own mobile processors and ARM uh, processors basically um, uh, they are working on mobile uh, um, processors. When I say mobile processors, not for the phone. Uh, mo uh, pr these processors are running advanced reduced instruction set computers. And originally, the RISC machine. And if it is a family of the uh, RISC, yes, they are running RISC computers. But nowadays, they are planning to run computers using ARM uh, processors. Okay we have computers which will be running on processors. I think, I'm not sure which company was doing that. Let me check for you. ARM processor laptops. So the MacBook Air, oh yeah, the MacBook Air will be running the ARM processors. 
ARM again, ARM is a, a processor company which is running a, a very basic processors, but now these processors are going up to the um, laptops. Leash because they consume less power. Remember, in your laptop, you want something that will consume less power. Type if they consume less power, what will this mean? Means it is much better and they can run um, uh, more efficiently. Most of the tablets they are running the ARM uh, processors, and nowadays you can see that he, over here we have the MacBook Air will be running the ARM uh, processors also. So this is basically the uh, whole idea. Now these ARM uh, processors are running basically a system on chip. Then we have the advanced peripheral bus, which is a simple a strobed access bus with minimal interface complexity. We have the advanced system uh, bus, and we have the advanced high performance bus, which is also a different uh, system. Okay, so I think I will stop over here for today. I will continue uh, this inshallah on uh, next week talking about system on chip and we will start talking about the um, uh, FPGAs. Once we finish all of that, we will uh, have all of our classes dedicated for the projects and we'll start discussing the projects uh, after uh, mid in the mid of uh, module number four, which is uh, week number uh, 12 insha'Allah okay